good morning. We're ready to get started. My name is Dr. Kreiner. I'm the principal here at the senior high school. And this morning what we have are some opening exercises as far as our expectations for students as they approach uh, the learning environment here at the senior high school. So behind me on the, on the screen what you'll see are a list of names that generally outside of the instructional day as opposed to working with your teachers um, and, and throughout the day are a list of individuals who you also have exposure to uh, in the main office and then also in the counseling suite. At the senior high, we have broken up uh, students into uh, different houses as far as uh, junior classes, last name A through K and L through Z. So A through K students uh, report out of the main office. Mrs. McEwen is your assistant uh, principal, and she works with uh, students in a variety of capacities, uh, student behavior, attendance, academics, a lot of different types of things that, that come out of uh, her office. She's going to speak quite extensively this morning to talk about rules and procedures that we have here at the senior high school. Also with us, we have uh, two new additions to the senior high school. We have a school, uh, school librarian and then also our school nurse. You have them introduce themselves here in a second, just so you're familiar with the different types of services that are available both in our library and then also out of our, uh, out of our health office as well. First is Ms. Weenan. She's our new school librarian. So let's give her a warm welcome. Thank you so much. I know that you are new to this building, and this year I am as well. Uh, so thank you for welcoming me. I want the library to be a place that is our shared space, and that means that you, I need your input. I'm really looking forward to working with you this year. We have a lot of wonderful resources, a lot of great books, uh, but the way that we get better is with your input. So please stay tuned for updates about library club and book club opportunities. I also have a lot of wonderful digital resources and we're working on moving that into the Blackboard space so they're even easier for you to find and access so that you can be successful in every academic project that you have over the next two years. I'm um, again looking forward to seeing you. I hope you stop by and visit the library very soon. Good morning everyone. My name is Mrs. Scrabus, Mrs. S, Nurse. Help, I will answer to anything, uh, please. I just want you to know I am here to help. Um, I will be respectful of you when you come into my health office. I do not know what your experience has been in the past, but I promise you every day I start my day, I have a smile on my face, kindness in my heart, knowledge in my head, and it all comes together. And if I could do anything, please uh, feel free, stop on in. Thank you. And also, Officer Todd Ray is with us as well. Uh, Officer Ray will talk a little bit towards the end. You'll get to, to meet him. And then also over here is Mr. Longo. Mr. Longo is our student assistance coordinator. He is a bit of an extension off of our, our school counseling and works with students in a variety of capacities uh, that he will reach out uh, to students who are, who are in need of, of different types of services here. Also, in regard to your school counselor, it's very important as, as juniors that you get to know who your school counselors are. Uh, they are also indicated by last name of your alphabet. Uh, if you have not already, and you will have the opportunity over the next uh, couple weeks, couple months, to get to know your school counselor, make sure that you set appointments up with them. They're available in the counseling suite, which is located right behind the main offices. And very easy way to schedule with them is going into the office and signing up on, on their Google Calendar. And in that way, you can find out when they're available, uh, your schedules can line up, and then you can make individual appointments with them. They're a val very valuable resource as you start to um, determine what it is as far as career goals that you have, and making sure that you align your coursework that we have here at NASH with your different types of career goals so you can be successful. The next slide talks about uh, the expect respect policy that we have here at the senior high school. Expect respect goes through five separate pieces here as far as what we expect from students. <coughs> and then also what students should, should expect from us. Respect is a two-way street, and I think many of you recognize that. In order to get respect, you have to give respect. And I think this building has, is built <coughs> quite a bit on a lot of different aspects of, of respect. One of the pieces up there, the first one that's up there is, is respecting school property. And many of you over the past couple years have recognized that throughout the course of the school year, you have access to a lot of different types of school property that can be very expensive, one of which is, is your laptops. 
As you carry your laptops around, those are things that we ask that as you approach your learning, you make sure that you treat those things with respect. One of the pieces that I'd reach out and ask all of you is to make sure is that if you have not re-signed up for your insurance policy, that's a $35 insurance policy, to make sure I go online. That's something you need to do every year. Uh, the website, the information is placed online so you can go on, make sure you put your information on there so that your laptop is covered. If it drops, if it breaks, if there's something wrong with it, it's a $35 coverage fee that, that covers a lot of stuff on that computer. Computers themselves as far as replacement are $850. And in that process of breaking and getting a loaner until you get another new one uh, can be quite a hassle. So if you haven't signed up for your, your laptop insurance, I'd make sure you do that. Some of the other things that you'll start to recognize as well as, as you move through uh, the senior high school and also as you move on to post-secondary uh, institutions as well, you, you're issued books and a lot of different materials. Textbooks themselves uh, that we purchase here can be anywhere between $100, $150 to $250 a piece. Those are things that you'll start to recognize as well when you move on to post-secondary and you're responsible for buying your own textbooks. Um, so as we use and reuse those te textbooks, make sure you're treating them with respect so that we can reissue those out to, to other individuals as well. Lab equipment, restroom facilities, uh, facilities that we have here, the auditorium, our athletic fields, a lot of different things that we have here that, that uh, we're very fortunate to have in North Allegheny. We wanna make sure that our school property uh, is there for, for others to take advantage of. So treat those things with, with respect. Second piece up there is respecting learning, and that's why everybody is here. That aspect of, of learning is extremely important. And in order to create an environment where you're able to, um, to learn, we also have the third one up there, which is safety. But when we talk about learning, approaching your learning, it's making sure that, that you're prepared and ready to go for each of your classes. So at, at night, you're doing your homework, you're preparing yourselves, you're showing up to school on time, you're showing up to your classes on time, you're submitting your work, you're not submitting someone else's work. You're respecting that, that learning environment by participating in class, uh, just simply by, by doing the best work that you possibly can. So as you approach your, your learning, and some of the things you recognize is that in the global economy that we live in today, we want to make sure, our, our mission is to make sure that we prepare all students for success in a changing world. Because we recognize that the world is a very competitive environment and that you're not just comp competing against students here at North Allegheny for the highest grade point average. In a couple years, you're going to be competing against others from Allegheny County, others from Pennsylvania, the United States, and quite honestly, you're going to be competing with the world. So you need to make sure that you take advantage of your junior and senior year here at the senior high school so that you're taking advantage of the coursework that's available to you and that you're also taking advantage of the different types of learning environments uh, that we present to you. Your learning is your most important aspect. The third one up there, actually safety, is one of our most important things, is that we want to make sure that we can create a safe environment where all these things can happen, where you can approach your learning in a free environment where you're not being harassed or you're not being bullied or you're not being threatened by somebody from the outside. So one of the things the district did on a, in a proactive measure this year was that we did. We hired a school resource officer. And Officer Todd Ray will be able to help us in a variety of capacities to make sure that our learning environment is safe. But it also requires more of a, of a group effort to make sure that we have a safe learning environment. And in some of those cases, it's, it's you being vigilant. It's you taking a look at, at your surrounding areas, making sure that you're reporting different things that you recognize are unsafe. If you recognize that there's any type of unsafe behavior by an individual, by somebody in the community, somewhere that has a, a, threatened to, uh, a threat to this building, make sure you report it, either to your teacher, to a counselor, to an administrator, somebody so that we can create an environment here that, that is absolutely safe because the learning doesn't take place in an environment that's not safe. So that's one of the things that, that we value most important. And the last two up there are respecting yourselves and respecting others. And the biggest part about respecting yourself is recognizing that you are the one that has the most control over how you respect yourself. It's how you talk, it's the language that you use, it's the individuals that you associate with, it's how you dress, it's how you portray yourselves to others. It's what you put into your body, it's what you don't put into your body, it's what you do to your body and what you don't do to your body. So it's making sure that you treat yourself with respect so that you can accomplish the great things that you want to accomplish. Drugs, alcohol, other poor decision-making types of factors, those are things that are going to get in the way of you being successful. Those are the things that are not aligned with your career interests. So those are things that you want to avoid. You want to make sure you're getting a good proper rest at night, good sleep, making sure that you're putting good things in your body, making sure you're eating healthy type of diet, and making sure you're approaching yourself getting exercise so that you're ready to go and you're fit and you can approach learning in, in a great way. 
So respect yourself. It shows a lot about who you are. If you value yourself, you're the one that has the most control over that. And as you move towards respecting others, the one thing that we have a, uh, a great environment here at the senior high school is we have a ride, wide variety of cultures, different types of backgrounds, different types of people with a large uh, variety of experiences that they bring to the table. So one of the opportunities that you'll get over the course of the next two years through clubs, activities, classes, different types of things, is you can extend yourselves out to different types of people who you haven't associated with in the past. And you can do that by getting yourself involved in a different club or an activity. Network with some different people who have the same type of interest as you in that area. But take advantage of, of the backgrounds of others, get to know them, get to know what they value and what their feelings are, and it makes you a better all well-rounded individual as you approach your learning and really as you prepare yourself uh, for the next phases of your life. So the expect respect piece, respecting school property, respecting learning, safety, yourself and others, these are things that they're not unfamiliar. What I'm saying here is, is a lot of, of what you've heard in the past. You've probably heard it the whole way since kindergarten. It's being a responsible individual uh, and making sure that you're preparing yourselves for success in a changing world. So the next couple slides that we have on here talk a little bit about school policy, uh, talk about um, the code of conduct and the student handbook. Mrs. McEwen is going to uh, work you through some of those aspects and make sure that you're very familiar with the type of expectations that we have here uh, at the senior high. Mrs. McEwen. One of the pieces that uh, Dr. Kreider did forget in the respect yourself part is also the way that you dress. A few things this year um, in our student handbook, we did change some things um, regarding dress. Part of it is for safety as well. Um, you are permitted to wear hoodies to school, but while in the building, once that first bell rings, you're not permitted to have the hood on your head. Um, if you are walking down the hall, it makes it very difficult for us to identify that that is a student and not an intruder or somebody in the building, as well as to identify who that student is if we needed to for some reason. So when you are walking throughout the school building, you are not permitted to have your hood up on your head. So that was a change to our, um, to our handbook this year. In addition, um, for the ladies, um, some of the tops, we're not permitting half tops. So your shirt should touch your, your belly. We don't want to see anything that we should not see. So shorts, um, there's not necessarily a specific length, but we shouldn't see anything that we shouldn't see. So just keep in mind, respect yourself when you're getting dressed in the mornings um, because you may get asked to change clothes or to put on a pair of leggings or a t-shirt if you're not following that policy. Attendance. Obviously, there's a correlation between attendance and how well you do in class. So we want you here every day, and here we really value attendance, and we track it on a regular basis. Many of you will find out this year, if you don't have brothers or sisters that have already told you, Mr. McGahey and I meet with students on a regular basis to discuss their attendance. Um, some of the things that I can tell you is to make sure that you bring in a note if you are absent, you have three days to bring in a handwritten note or a doctor's excuse. We do not accept emailed excuses here at NASH. Okay, so all notes must be brought in and turned into your homeroom teacher within three days. If you are tardy, again, three days to bring in a note. So one of the things I just kind of want to talk about here, make sure that you're familiar with what is excused and what's not excused. Okay, if you're tardy to school and you put that you were having car trouble, that's not excused. Okay, um, we offer bus transportation. So make sure that you are familiar with what is an excused absence, an excused tardy. And then in addition, um, we do have consequences here at NASH for unexcused tardies and absences. And since you guys are new um, to the building, I will kind of review that briefly, but again, I can't say enough throughout this presentation, be familiar with your student handbook. You are signing off on it. Um, if you have three unexcused absences this year, okay, at any point, and I will meet with you before you hit that third one, I will say, you need to bring your note in. Here's what's going to happen, okay? But three unexcused absences is a three-hour Saturday detention, 
you will come in on a Saturday and serve three hours. Four unexcused tardies to school is a one hour Saturday detention. And then discipline is progressive after that, meaning it builds. So that one hour the next time for tardies becomes two, then three, and for unexcused absences, it starts becoming in-school suspensions. Okay, so please look at your handbook. Please bring in a note. If you are absent, you have three days. Okay. Transportation. Um, a lot of you in here probably still ride the bus. Some of you are probably driving to school. But transportation is uh, a privilege. It is not a right. So all school rules that apply while you're here in school also apply while you're on the bus. Um, the biggest thing I can say is don't make us have to revoke that right from you to ride the bus. We don't want to take that away. Um, usually we will try things first, such as moving a seat, if there are issues between students on the bus. But again, good bus behaviors. Student drivers, parking permits, uh, just make sure that it's always displayed. Don't park in the red zones, okay? That is for staff only. Um, drive safely, again, that whole idea of being safe. Low speed limit through here. Um, one of the big things I can tell you is that illegal left hand turn. Many of you know what I'm talking about by the tennis courts. Okay, multiple students have already received a ticket from our SRO this year. So for making that illegal left hand turn. So the one thing I can tell you is don't make it. Go to the stoplight and turn into the school there. Okay, so you will receive a ticket if the SRO is there and he sees you. You will also get called into my office. Any driving violation, and again, if you have a parking permit, you signed off that you understand this, results in a loss of your permit for 30 to 60 days as well as the possibility of a fine. So once again, be familiar with our parking responsibilities. And parent drop off, if your parent's dropping you off, it is around the back of the building. Please don't have your parents drop you off in front because we are trying to be safe once again. It's not safe if we're getting dropped off where buses are coming through. So again, parent drop off is around the back. Lunch behavior. One of the biggest things is lunches are not to leave the cafeteria. Okay? If you are going to the library or to a classroom um, during lunchtime, you need to eat your lunch and then report to that class. You cannot take your lunch with you. Okay, so that is one thing. I'm not sure if that is different from when you were at NAI or not, but lunches are not permitted to leave the cafeteria. Um, you're not to go into the locker areas to eat your lunch, no other area than the cafeteria. Nash is a closed campus, so you're not permitted to leave. Okay, I know Moe's is right there. You can't go across, get your lunch at Moe's, and come back. Okay, we do not leave the building at any time without permission from an administrator. Um, you must stay in, in the cafeteria until the bell rings unless you have a pass to the library or to a class. Okay, so again, you are not to be out of the cafeteria area. Um, as Dr. Kreider said, that respect thing, throw your trash away. Don't leave it up. Don't leave it on a table for someone else to clean up. Okay, respect our cafeteria workers and our teachers that are on lunch duty that they don't have to clean up after you. If you are caught stealing food from the cafeteria, there is a consequence for it. Again, refer to your handbook, okay? But it is a pretty severe consequence if you're caught stealing. So you wanna make sure that if you are getting lunch, that you are paying for it. If you're getting a water, a snack, again, make sure that you pay for your lunch. And last year, we had a lot of kids trying to do Uber Eats, okay? So a lot of like drop-offs up front, for food. This year, if food is brought here, it's just being turned away. So if you pay for it and you say, but I paid for it, it's getting turned away. We are not accepting it. Okay? So do not waste your money ordering Uber Eats or pizzas to the school because they are going to be turned away. Okay, prohibited areas, obviously the locker rooms. Unless you are in gym class, you have no reason to be in the locker rooms. So that would be a prohibited area. Okay. Um, student parking lot during the school day, as I said, we are a closed campus. So if you come into school, the school bell has rang for the start of the day, and you realize you left something in your car, you are not permitted to go and get it. You may come to the office and ask 
one of the administrators, but I will tell you that 90% of the time we are going to deny it. Okay, if you left your book bag, it's a life lesson. We won't leave it the next day. Okay, so, but you can come and ask, depending on what it is that you need out of your car, we may or may not let you go get it. Um, don't hang around in the locker areas during class or lunchtime. Those are kind of unsupervised areas. We don't want kids just hanging out there. So if it's lunchtime, you can't just go sit in the locker banks. Occasionally you'll find kids that take their lunches and, and hang out over there. Um, we, again, for safety purposes, need to know where you're at. And also you have to remain in the cafeteria or the locker banks prior to the first period bell ringing um, unless you have a pass to go to the library or to a class in the morning. Okay, so again, we kind of talked about that whole safe environment. And I'm sure many of you are aware um, that smoking, tobacco products, and vaping are not permitted here in school. So if you are driving to school, the one thing I can express is they're also not permitted in your vehicle. If you drive to school, anything that is in your vehicle, if we had a reason to search it, can result in discipline. So if you vape on your way to school and you leave it in your car and for some reason we had to search your vehicle that day, yes, you left your vape in the car, but your car is on school district property and the policy would be just the same as if you had it here in school. Okay, so just some things to think about if you are a student driver. Fighting and assault, again, be familiar, respect one another. If you have a conflict that you feel is going to result in an altercation, you have lots of resources that Dr. Kreider just went over. You can talk to myself, you can talk to your school counselor, you can talk to Mr. Longo. You have a lot of resources to keep us from getting to that point of an altercation. Weapons, I think it's pretty easy, don't bring weapons to school, okay? Um, the only thing I wanna point out in addition to like our common sense weapons like knives and guns, um, I just wanna point out, especially for the ladies who may have this on their key ring, don't have pepper spray or mace. That is a weapon, okay? So if that is something that maybe you have with you on the weekends, um, don't bring it into school. Okay, because sometimes that's one of those things that people don't realize is considered a weapon and it would result in a 10 day out of school suspension. So please, if you have that on your keychain, leave it at home. Okay, um, substance abuse, again, this goes back to respecting yourself. Okay, don't come to school after just using. We don't want students here who Drank a six pack before coming into school, okay? Don't bring things like that into school. So just respecting yourself as well as the others here. Again, closed campus, we went over that. And student searches. So again, if we have reasonable suspicion, we are going to search not only your book bag, have you show us what's in your pockets, we're going to search your locker. And if you drive, we're gonna search your vehicle which is why I'm saying the importance of realizing that what is in your vehicle, if it's against a school rule, if it's against school policy, you have a substance in there, you have tobacco in there, you would be held accountable for those items. So just something to think in mind if you're a student driver. Computer usage. Um, again, Dr. Kreider kind of talked about, we have these laptops, they're here to enhance. We wanna make sure that we're respecting them, that we're following the policy with our laptops. Uh, one of the biggest issues I saw last year with laptops as far as misusage was just that students were bypassing administrator logins and they were adding things onto their computer that they knew they weren't supposed to add, okay? So programs that they weren't supposed to have on their computers were being added. When you take your computer to the help desk, they tell myself or Mr. McGahey if those things have been done. And the last thing you wanna do in a building that uses so much technology is lose the right to your technology, okay? So please make sure that you are following all usage information. Cell phones, um, use them at the correct times, okay? They, if, unless a teacher is asking you to have it out for educational purposes, for games, uh, sometimes you do like Quizlet or some of the Kahoot or something like that and the teachers sometimes give you the option to use 
um, your phone versus your laptop because it's easier. Other than that, your phone should not be out during the school day. Information is not private, so anything you access while you're here in school, just know that we may be able to see what you're accessing. Okay, so just keep that in mind when you're on your laptop using district server. Um, and again, be respectful. And that's it. So at this point, I'm going to introduce Officer Ray, our new SRO. Thank you. As she introduced me, my name is Officer Ray. I'm with the Town of McCandless Police Department. I've been there for about 20 years now. Um, just to let you know, school-based policing is something that's new to our department. So as the program grows, we're going to learn from you and, um, and your and unlawful acts, so to speak, and um, hopefully build a positive program, you know, with, with each of you. Um, that's about it. Uh, I'm located in room 128, if you have any questions. Um, in regards to cell phones, that type of thing, any type of sexting, those type of acts, uh, again, unlawful, we'll handle those according to the Left Turn Act, um, violations, we'll handle those. And um, like I said, we want to create a positive, safe environment for each of uh, the students here. So um, if, if you recognize something, bring it to my attention. Um, I realize that even good students make, you know, poor choices. So. It's uh, about working together and, and um, trying to make a great year for you, each of you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Officer Ray. And so a lot of what we, a lot of what we discussed here, it's a lot of the what to do, what not to do um, as you're here in the building. And you get that a lot during the opening days of school. You get the uh, all the information from your classroom teachers, here's what to do in my classroom, and so a lot of this information sometimes can be quite mundane, but it's extremely important for us to, to go through and cover these things. Um, so recognize that a lot of the policies and procedures that we have in place are really designed so that 90 to 95 percent of you can have access to your learning. It's a very small percentage of the students who get called down to the main office because of violating uh, school conduct and school procedures. But recognize, we know that as young adults, we're common sense people. We know that in a building this large, that good kids, as Officer Ray mentioned, good people make mistakes too, and we recognize that. So one thing that we ask is when you come down, if you get called down to the main office for any type of discipline procedure, recognize that we do our homework ahead of time, that we talk to the teacher, we talk to other students, we take a look at surveillance video, we take a look at a lot of different things, so that when we're asking you questions, in many cases we know the answers to the questions that we're asking you. We're just trying to make sure that the answers align with what you're going to say. So we ask for your candor. If you made a mistake, you step up to it and you admit to it. We're adults. It's not going to be the end of the world. Sometimes we make small mistakes. It's not a big deal. We get through it. And sometimes we make large mistakes. And sometimes those large mistakes do involve Officer Ray. They involve the McCandless Police Department. They do involve a lot of different things, out of school suspension, possibility of expulsion. So as you approach, any time you, you come down to the main office, talk to us. If you have an issue beforehand, like Mrs. McEwen said, if, if you think that there's something you shouldn't be bringing to school but you, you think you're supposed to, check with us ahead of time. Ask the questions before you do something. If you're not sure that it's right, ask somebody. Uh, ask one of the adults. Ask one of your teachers. Get down to the main office. Talk to us. Uh, as I mentioned, we're common sense people. We're here to help you. Uh, but at the same time, we need to put a, a foundation down where we make sure that uh, we have safe rules, safe procedures, uh, so that all of you have access to your curriculum. And uh, that's one of the main things that we want to we want to prep and prepare for. Um, so junior year, I think, as, as you have talked to to many people, junior year is extremely important. Uh, but at the same time, make sure you approach it with common sense on on your end too. Don't stress out. Don't get yourselves worked up. If you have a problem with any of the classes that you're taking, talk to your teacher. Many times they will have additional hours set up either in the morning, after school, during lunchtime, during study halls, during homeroom different types of times where you can get a hold of them. Contact them through email. So take advantage of some different resources that you have so you don't put any undue stress uh, in, regard to, in, in regard to your coursework. Uh, I think many of you uh, started to recognize as far as the way the building is. Uh, the building is pretty easy to navigate with the six different stairwells that we have. We have 
the four major corners, and what I've recognized in, in the, the morning anyway, towards the beginning here, is that many people are using the, the front two stairwells. Also take notice, we have two stairwells in the back of the building. That in the morning, you can also use the, the stairwells in the back as well. Your corner stairwells are usually the ones that move a lot faster. The stairwells that are in the middle of the building, they're a little bit more narrow and they move a little bit slower. So if you can use, if you can access the larger ones on the corners, I think that gets you to navigate through, through the building a little bit faster. Um, start to recognize your schedule, start to get that pattern down. Um, try to recognize when you can make that stop your locker and, and get things in. Take advantage of the Tiger Cafe. Tiger Cafe is open after school hours. So during school, um, in the morning you can get your breakfast, afternoon you get your, your lunch, and then also after school hours you have the opportunity to, to get a little snack from the Tiger Cafe. It's located just off the, the main cafeteria. Uh, they have some different types of, of snacks in there. So some of you stay after school for athletics, some of you stay after school for uh, music or different clubs or different activities. Uh, you can always stop into the Tiger Cafe. It uses the same uh, code that you use just in, in the regular lunch room just to punch things through and pay for things. Um, so keep things Keep things on, on the positive side. Uh, this period is very close to being over. Any general questions from anybody that you think the large group would would benefit from? Anything we didn't cover that you wanted to cover? Good. Throughout the course of the school year, again, if you have any questions about anything, pop down to see us uh, in the main office. We're here to help. We're here to support. We want to make sure that these next two years are extremely successful so that um, next May, ne next June comes along, we're ready to get kids across the stage and get you graduating, and get you moving on to directions of areas you want to pursue. So when the bell rings here, you guys will be dismissed off to, your, off to your fourth period class. Thank you again for coming down here. Thank you for your attention. Have a great school year.